The ridiculous and baseless indictment of me by the Biden administration's weaponized Department of Injustice will go down as among the most horrific abuses of power in the history of our country. President Trump over the weekend um, speaking up, and a lot of others have spoken up as well. We're going to have a bunch of that for you in this hour, and fewer transgender bearded lady Democrat stories stealing trophies from women and athletic events as Democrats are wont to do, aren't they? Why is that? Why do Democrat men want to steal trophies from women? Because they can't win when competing against men? Is that why? And uh, Matt in New York you know, sure, you, you, you know, you can't just uh, be born a girl, grow up a girl, become a woman, then take some hormones so you can grow a beard and then say, I'm a man. No. If your feet have never slipped off the pedals of your Schwinn Stingray while you were jumping over a ramp, crushing your baby makers, then, you know, you don't know what it's like to be a man. That's a that's an integral part of growing up as a boy. Just me? What is <laughs> the, it was raining and the pedals were, uh, a, uh, never mind that. We're going to we're going to get to that in uh, in just a moment. Uh, President Trump and uh, William Barr and Alan Dershowitz and and more. Because. It goes on and on. Mm-mm-mm. But uh, Matt was great. Matt, thank you for the call. I wish I uh, wish we could have uh, had you on for a longer period of time because, you know, it's very flattering. So it's, <laughs> Elvis, <laughs> ever since my baby left me, the uh, the Democrat Party does a lot of a uh, lot of crazy things. And one of the things that they're doing now is they are uh, they're not only busy lynching. President Trump, the Democrat Party, is the party of lynch mobs and of lynching and of the Confederate States of America and of Jim Crow and of standing in schoolhouse doors. And Republicans should remind the country of that every time they speak in public, honestly. And the uh, Republicans and Kevin McCarthy and the others on Capitol Hill should be on a daily basis, holding press conference on the press conferences on the corrupt Biden family and and so on. But let me get let me get to this because the the another person they're busy trying to lynch right now is a uh, Marine named Daniel Penny. Daniel Penny is 24 years old. He was riding a New York City subway train when a disturbed, mentally ill Democrat named Jordan Neely began threatening to murder everybody on the train, bragging about his desire to go to prison for life. He didn't care. He'll go to prison for life. I'm going to kill people. And there are, you know, there are women on the plane, there on the on the train rather, there are men on the train. And one of them was a now former US Marine, Daniel Penny. Now He spoke over the weekend, and a video was released, and I want to share some of that with you. Daniel Penny disputes the claim of 15-minute chokehold, which was always a lie, on homeless man, but I thought he was a talented uh, uh, Michael Jackson impersonator. That's what the Reverend Al Charlatan told me. The 15-minute chokehold on homeless man Jordan Neely denies trying to kill him on New York City subway. Ex-Marine Daniel Penny, who was charged with killing a homeless man, Jordan Neely, on the subway last month, said he wasn't trying to choke him to death when he jumped into action after Neely threatened passengers. Penny, 24 years old, is charged with manslaughter by the radical left-wing Soros extremist. Uh, you see, George Soros' son is taking over the $24 billion uh, effort to destroy the United States of America. And you see him posing with Kamala Harris, meeting with Kamala Harris, right? The son of George Soros, who is here to destroy the world. And he's got $24 billion to do it with. He loves crime and murder and hates law and order and America. 
So uh, he's going to be taking over. And, and the Democrats are in bed with him already. They're in a, you know, a lubricated sleeping bag with the Soros cabal. And uh, I, uh, I need to get back to this thing here, though. So uh, Petty, 24, charged with manslaughter. After restraining Jordan Neely, 30 years old, who later died, um, and I love this in New York there, we say, the fiddle chokehold on an F train. Like, everybody cares what uh, letter the train is, you know. It's a national story. Don't treat it like it's, uh, you know, your neighborhood paper, the F train. Neely died from compression of the neck, according to the medical examiner's office. So let's go to the, uh, the videotape. Um, in a series of videos released by Penny's lawyers on Sunday, that's yesterday, the 24-year-old East Village resident, that's uh, Greenwich Village in Lower Manhattan, denied that he had held Neely by the throat for 15 minutes, as previously reported by corrupt news media that's part of the Democrat Party's lynch mob, said that he had no intention of taking his life, uh, what he called a scary situation. So here is uh, the, uh, the apple, the, the target of the Democrat Party. Daniel Penny, uh, 24 years old, served in the Marine Corps, was riding a New York City subway train, a a demented, mentally ill psychopath who was thrown onto the streets by the Democrat Party to fend for himself, uh, was threatening to kill people. And, and here is uh, Daniel Penny. A man came on, stumbled on. He was, appeared to be on drugs. Um, the doors closed, and he ripped his jacket off and, violent, and threw it at the people sitting down to my left. I was listening to music at the time, um, and he was yelling, so I took my headphones out to hear what he was yelling. And... The three main threats that he repeated over and over was, I'm going to kill you, I'm prepared to go to jail for life, and I'm willing to die. I'm going to kill you, I'm prepared to go to jail for life, I'm willing to die. Pulled his jacket off violently, threw it at people, and he's declaring that he doesn't care if he goes to jail for life, he doesn't care if he dies, he's going to kill you. These are what we call clues, see? And uh, there is Daniel Penny with his earbuds in. He said, I pulled my headphones out, not took them off. So they're earbuds in the ear canal, right? Pulled them out, which I don't think is, um, you know, recommended behavior when you're in any big city uh, subway environment. I, I don't go around with earbuds uh, unless, of course, I'm, you know, listening to the Chris Plant show. But other than that, <laughs> but other than that, tear the headphones up. So he's threatening to kill people. He doesn't care if he goes to prison. He doesn't care if he dies. And here's a 24-year-old guy who's a Marine. He's a big guy, but it turns out a uh, crazy dude is bigger than him. Uh, here is Daniel Penny. This was a scary situation, and uh, Mr. Neely came on. He was, he was threatening. He's, he's a, I'm 6'2", and he was taller than me. So it was, And there's a common misconception that Marines don't get scared. We're actually taught uh, one of our core values is courage and Courage is not the absence of fear, but how you handle fear. And, you know, I was scared for myself, but I looked around. I saw women and children. He was yelling in their faces, saying, saying these threats. I couldn't just sit still. Now, this is what <clears throat> uh, citizenship used to be. But now the left has murdered citizenship, too. And also, they've murdered masculinity. Masculinity is toxic, according to the Democrat Party, unless, of course, you're a bearded lady, in which case you get trophies that were built and made for women and girls, and then, you know, the women with male genitalia bring the trophies home and the Democrats applaud and pretend that everything is great because of the mental illness that is so rampant. Daniel Penny. Some people say that I was holding on to Mr. Ely for 15 minutes. This is not true. I mean, between stops is only a couple minutes. And so the whole interaction less, less than less than five minutes. Some people say I was trying to choke him to death, which is also not true. I was trying to restrain him. Uh, you can see in the video, there's a clear rise and fall of his chest, indicating that he's breathing. I'm trying to restrain him from him being able to carry out the threats. And now he's got to deny intending to choke him to death because the Democrats there are pro-crime pro-mentally ill people on their own subways. It's why people are fleeing New York City and so many other cities, by the way. Did you see that San Francisco 
you know, where, like, you know, human feces is the new San Francisco treat. Rice a roni is no longer the treat. They, uh, their real estate values in San Francisco are falling. They're plummeting. The um, real estate values, San Francisco dropping, plummeting faster than any other jurisdiction in the United States of America. The entire country just dropping like a rock in what should be one of the most beautiful cities and, and is, it's hanging on by a thread, one of the most beautiful cities on the planet Earth, right? But it's just completely berserk. Bay Area real estate value is fastest dropping in the nation. K-R-O-N-T-V, Cron, they call it in uh, San Francisco. Uh, dropping faster than any place because the Democrats are murdering our cities and feminism and masculinity and Americanism and common sense and reality. Real estate values across the Bay Area fastest dropping in the nation, according to a recent report from realestateagents.com. The report released late last month identifies San Francisco, Oakland, Hayward Market, and San Jose, Sunnyvale, Santa Clara as uh, the number one and number two fastest dropping markets in the United States of America in terms of real estate values over the course of the last year. Now, why would that be a problem? That's that's not going to be a problem of any kind, is it? Uh, also, uh, crazy, you know, because the Democrats are murdering our cities, and I just came from Chicago uh, the other day, came home on Friday. In Chicago, an amazing story that, uh, that I was sharing with people as well, the catalytic converter theft epidemic. The Chicago Sun-Times had the story over the weekend. Thieves have taken more than 17,000 catalytic converters, stealing them from cars in Chicago, just the city of Chicago alone, since 2019, and they say that is surely an undercount. 17,000 catalytic converters stolen from cars. And listen to this. 34 have led to arrests, according to the Chicago Sun-Times. More than 17,000, surely an undercount, catalytic converters stolen from under the hood of cars, and there have been 34 arrests. The Democrats have waged war on the police, you see, and they support and love. They also have a George Soros prosecutor there, Kim Fox. She's on her way out, but she's pro-crime and, um, you know, anti-police. And and in New York, same thing. Daniel Penny having to defend himself because a crazy, mentally ill, doubtless drug-addled, homeless person that the Democrats threw on the street to fend for himself um, came on a subway train, threatened to murder people, said he doesn't care if he dies uh, or goes to prison for life. And when a, you know, a, a toxic m- masculine man intervenes, well, the Democrats go to lynch him. Some people say that this is about race, which is absolutely ridiculous. I didn't see a black man threatening passengers. I saw a man threatening passengers. That's a lot of whom were people of color. A man who helped restrain Mr. Neely was, was a person of color. And then a few days after the incident, I, I read in the papers that uh, a woman of color came out and called me a hero. What, I don't believe that I'm, I'm a hero. But uh, she was one of those people that I was trying to protect. Trying to protect Marine Corps uh, uh, instincts and, and all that good stuff. Just uh, just amazing. Uh, uh, Daniel Penny. The videos didn't start until they saw the situation was under control. I knew I had to act. And I acted in a way that would protect the other passengers, protect myself, and protect Mr. Neely. I was trying to keep him on the ground as, until the police came. I was praying that the police would come. And take this situation under, uh, take this situation over. I didn't want to be put in that situation, but I couldn't just sit still and let let him carry out these threats. But in Democrat land, the villain is the hero, and the hero is the villain because they view the world through the wrong end of the telescope on a daily basis. Hey, I've got breaking news for all my fellow Americans. That's you and all of us. Biden's dangerous plan to force Americans into a digital dollar, digital currency, goes live in a matter of weeks. No matter what they say, what they're telling you, it's not something that is going to help you or anybody else. If you don't take action today, it might be too late. 
The Federal Reserve will be deployed in phases with the initial launch taking place on July 1st, less than a month away of 2023. It's called Fed Now, and many Americans are going to be completely surprised by this. Everything you've ever worked for is at stake, but there is a way for Americans to legally opt out of the digital dollar before it's too late. Call my friends at American Alternative Assets. They're going to help educate and and uh, bring you up to speed on how you can diversify your risk and you know keep from the falling dollar wrecking you, wiping you out, the volatile markets, with gold and silver IRAs. Give them a call today at 888, the number 4GOLD20. That's right, call them now, 888-446-5360. Don't let Biden and the crazy lefty force you to use the government's new digital dollar Call 888, the number 4, GOLD20. That's 888-446-5360. Individual results may vary. There's no guarantee that past performance will be indicative of future results. Seek your own legal tax investment and financial advice before opening an account. Yeah, so uh, Daniel Penny, I mean, again, serve in the Marine Corps. Step up when a crazy person is threatening to murder everybody on a can confined train car and uh, the Democrat Party they get the rope in the tree just like in the old days Hey Chris here with some exciting news now you can listen to me live on the WMAL app doesn't matter if you're in your car, in the office, on the go. The WMAL app delivers crystal clear around the clock news coverage anywhere with cell service or Wi Fi. So don't miss a second of your favorite shows. Download the WMAL app today on the Apple App Store or at Google Play Store. We have time for a let's let's take a uh, let's take a quick uh, phone call. Then we're going to get to President Trump and Bill Barr and Alan Dershowitz, and we don't have a ton of time, but I know Larry knows how to make a point. So let's go to Larry calling from East Tennessee. Lawrence, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hi there, Chris. Hey, Larry. Long time listener, first time caller. Welcome. You know, uh, with what's going on in our country, a lot of common sense and stupidity. And I'm a veteran, Gulf War era veteran, U.S. Army, and a lot of veterans are fed up. We are fed up with what's going on in our country as far as the leadership that we have. Um, You know, I've been a longtime conservative. My first time that I ever voted in election, I voted for Ronald Reagan. Used to be a Democrat, but I finally got common sense and realized what is going on. A lot of this is by design. But American people, the ones that have common sense, needs to stand up to this of what's going on with uh, President Trump. They're stepping all over the Constitution. And when I was in the military, I, I swore to uphold the Constitution. And I'm still willing to do that. A lot of veterans that are able are feeling that way. You know, that is a fact, Jack. And I've got a bunch on that coming right up. All right. Now, I want to get into uh, everything we have here on the President Trump indictment. The uh, Democrat Party, and boy, they're loving it. I I was getting text messages this morning from a a left-wing woman that I've known pretty much all my life uh, who lives in Chicago, and she's very, very wealthy. And and, uh, the second shout, oh, oh, Trump with all his inherited wealth. I'm like, really? Uh, didn't you inherit a pharmaceutical company? <laughs> uh, but uh, never mind that. Said uh, Trump grew up in Queens, and uh, you know ended up he's got a private 757. I think he earned that on his own. Towers all over the world with his name on top. But uh, pay no attention. The Democrats are a lynch mob, and they always have been, and they're really frothy about this. And again, I I wouldn't want to be on President Trump's security detail. That's for sure. Now, President Trump did apparently recommend that um, his supporters should show up in in Miami and protest. And if I were his lawyer, 
I would probably, I'm not, I would probably tell them that that is an ill-advised thing to do. You know, if there is a window broken in Florida tomorrow, it will be uh, January 6th all over again in the New York Times. It'll be a banner headline. Somebody broke a window. Trump incited violence. He just shouldn't be um, doing that. And in my humble opinion, the, the headlines are Trump goes after a special counsel's wife in first post-indictment appearance. Uh, Jack Smith's wife is an activist uh, and uh, anti-Trump, anti-Republican. And Jack Smith, the special counsel, is also well known as an anti-Republican legal activist. Uh, and uh, that's okay because, you know, the Washington Post is fine with that. They're anti-Republican activists, too. Former president calls Jack Smith's wife, uh, Kathy, uh, a- 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 Jack Smith and his wife, cowards. Well, that's uh, okay. President Trump's first public appearance Saturday, following new, my sister-in-law was there in Georgia, a delegate uh, at the uh, Trump event in Georgia, sent pictures and videos and a photograph of her, uh, of her credential and uh, so on. First public uh, speech on Saturday following the new indictment against him by a federal grand jury on Thursday, appearing at the Georgia GOP convention in Columbus, Georgia. He called the indictment, uh, in which he is charged with 37 felony counts over allegations, classified documents stored at Mar-a-Lago, ridiculous and baseless. And he uh, referred to uh, Smith as deranged. Well, let's get to the audio. It's much better that way. But uh, the headlines are are obviously frothy anti-Trump headlines. CBS News, Trump calls special counsel Jack Smith deranged and a Trump hater at Georgia GOP convention. Deranged lunatic, Trump attacks Jack Smith uh, on truth social after indictment unsealed and uh, on and on. And then, you know, that's Trump threatens Jack Smith and wife. No, no, he didn't. But, you know, the headline is there anyway, because the truth is not really what we do anymore, is it? So let's go to uh, let's go to soundbite number one. President Trump uh, over the weekend uh, speaking up for himself. This maniac, I call him a deranged person, Jack Smith. He's deranged. Uh, his wife hates Trump even more than he does. And these are the people we get treated very unfairly. Um, definitely treated very unfairly. The, you know, the personal uh, attacks, fine, fine. Give his enemies, who are numerous and have many powerful posts and media organizations and in politics and, and so on, uh, hands them the fodder with which to, uh, to go after him. President Trump. Biden is trying to jail his leading political opponent, an opponent that's beating him by a lot in the polls, just like they do in Stalinist Russia or communist China. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, now, it is uh, the kind of thing that we would expect from a third world country, a communist country, an authoritarian country. And, and uh, unfortunately, we have a news media that is almost universally fine with, uh, with all of it because they didn't vote for it. And boy, when they don't vote for you, they really don't vote for you, you know, at the Washington Post and the New York Times and CNN and beyond. Uh, Bill Barr was yesterday on Fox News Sunday with Shannon Bream talking about uh, all of this. And he is uh, not in President Trump's corner when it comes to when it comes to all of this, uh, to be sure, Bill Barr. The government's agenda was to get those, uh, protect those documents and get them out. And I think it was perfectly appropriate to do that. It was the right thing to do. The raid. Uh, and I think the counts under the Espionage Act uh, that he willfully retained those documents are solid counts. It's really espionage, the Espionage Act, which is never used and uh, certainly not against presidents of the United States. Now, the thing is, and who is it, John Bolton, Ambassador John Bolton, who worked for President Trump, has come out and said he should drop out of the race, right? Uh, uh, there are a lot of people who worked for President Trump who come away not liking him at all and undermining him. And um, that is a uh, sad and tragic reality, and it is a reality nonetheless. The, the list is long. 
And the espionage, I got to tell you, Bill Barr, I called him out for his BS earlier that the other president's classified documents, not comparable and not really an issue. And they were working with the archives. Not true. What William Barr said yesterday, not true. Uh, Joe Biden's documents over the steakhouse, Joe Biden's uh, documents at his $5 million waterfront house in Wilmington, Delaware. No, those were not documents that had been taken casually and were going to be turned over to the archives. Not the case. Not what was going on. His lawyers eventually found them and, and notified the White House, and then the White House, uh, by extension, notified the archives. But that is uh, playing a, a shell game. There are a lot of shell games being played here. Uh, William Barr. I, I do think we have to wait and see what the defense uh, says and, and, and what proves to be true. But well, that's good. I do good. think that even half what, what Andy McCarthy said, which is, is if even half of it is true, then he's toast. I mean, it's a it's a pretty it's a very detailed indictment, uh, and it's very very damning. If half of what is in the indictments is true, then he's toast. Now, um, Joe Biden should. Uh, get a pardon at the ready, a complete pardon at the ready, uh, so that when Trump wins next year, uh, Trump will consider pardoning Joe Biden. (laughs) That's how corrupt we've gotten as a country and how ridiculous this whole thing has gotten. It really is. Uh, William William Barr, uh, boy, just has the long knives for Donald Trump. This idea of presenting Trump as a victim here, a victim of a witch hunt, uh, is ridiculous. Yes, he's been a victim in the past. Yes, his uh, adversaries have obsessively pursued him with phony claims. And I've and I've been at his side defending against them when he is a victim. Here and there. But this is much different. He's not a victim here. Well, I got I got to tell you the scales of justice and equal justice under law in the relief, uh, uh, the entrance of the United States Supreme Court. We're not witnessing equal justice under law when it comes to Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton and uh, myriad other cases and the use of the Espionage Act, which is never trotted out and certainly not for politicians and certainly not for a president of the United States. And it's not as though, I mean, you want to talk about espionage and and treacherous, potentially treasonous behavior. Look at Joe Biden's money uh, flowing in from communist China, bringing Hunter Biden along on Air Force Two when he was vice president to meet with Chinese business leaders and then lie about it and deny it and then later have that uh, proven to be the case. Uh, The millions coming from Ukraine from Burisma, uh, Joe Biden demanding that the country fire the chief prosecutor that was investigating Burisma. And President Trump made a phone call about that and is impeached for it when we now have the documentation, the paperwork, the bank transactions, the LLCs showing where the money went. The millions and millions of dollars going into the Biden family coffers from foreign interests that are not on our side. Joe Biden as vice president derailing an investigation into the company that was funneling millions to his family. And all of this seems to be fine with every Democrat in the country, including on Capitol Hill and in the news media. It's extraordinary. Alan Dershowitz is a longtime, a Harvard law professor emeritus who was law professor to Ted Cruz, said he was one of the most brilliant students, a uh, law professor to Barack Obama. He said, yeah, he went there too. Um, not much of an impression left by Barack Obama at Harvard Law School. But, you know, they gave him jobs. It's like getting the Nobel Peace Prize and then bombing more countries than any president since World War II. Alan Dershowitz, Harvard Law Professor Emeritus, on the subject. If you put aside all your resources and do what Justice Jackson warned about uh, about 80 years ago, where he said it's a question of picking the man and then searching the law books or putting investigators to work to pin some offense on him. That's what they did. And Jack Smith is wrong when he says there's one set of laws. He was assigned only one job, to get Trump. Alan Dershowitz uh, reading the situation very differently than, um, than William Barr reading it. And it's true, and he's uh, making reference to the Soviet Union and the KGB chief under Joseph Stalin. Uh, President Trump made reference to Stalin and to Soviet and communist regimes. Leventi Beria, the head of the KGB, 
the uh, famous old line, show me the man and I'll show you the crime, meaning you can pick any person out of a crowd and he'll hang a crime on him and throw him in jail, you know. It's the old uh, Russian thing. We've got uh, a nation where uh, crime without punishment and punishment without crime. And that is the Soviet totalitarian version of a justice system. And there are a lot of us in the United States that that are looking at uh, what's happened and what continues to be happening to our country and in our country and the political abuses by, in every instance, the Democrat Party. And again, if I were Speaker of the House, I'd be out pounding the podium every day and shouting as loud as I can to get the attention of the American people as to what's going on here. Alan Dershowitz. This is a much stronger indictment than the Bragg indictment, but it's the product of targeting. And the question is, can you prosecute somebody when you targeted that person and went through every hoop, dotted every I, crossed every T, gave lawyers immunity, violated the lawyer-client privilege uh, in many respects, and then came up with something? I don't know how the courts will look at that. The Bragg indictment, um, Alvin Bragg, New York City, another Soros prosecutor, a uh, radical left-wing extremist tearing down our justice system from the inside, um, suspending, doing away with the statutes of limitation just for President Trump so they could prosecute one case and then restore the statutes of limitation so that they will apply to everyone else but not President Trump. Just an extraordinary moment in American jurisprudential history, and it should be front-page news in every newspaper with an outrage headline, but instead, that's not what we get. President Trump lawyer named Jim Trusty went on with George Snuffleupagus, who is a longtime Democrat Party political operative, uh, Capitol Hill apparatchik, a Democrat campaign apparatchik, a Clinton White House apparatchik, and then Presto, He's a million-dollar journalist at ABC News, and he was on doing the work of the party yesterday on that uh, Sunday morning show that used to be relevant, uh, talking to Trump lawyer Jim Trusty. No person is below the law. That's really the issue here. I mean, you've got these investigations in Delaware that are a thousand times more serious by a sitting president who has authorized his DOJ to try to sink the candidacy of his prime opposition while that guy has unsecured documents that he stole out of a skiff dozens of years ago. So, look, you know, we're not talking what about some talking sort of about, sir? What are you talking about? That is a ridiculous statement. Uh, there's this issue. <laughs> nice try. He doesn't follow the news. You know, what, uh, the Democrats, I, I've said this for years, these million-dollar news anchors don't actually follow the news. They read the New York Times, and they read the Washington Post, and they watch CNN, and they watch each other. It's a circle fest in a hot tub. But if it is outside of, you know, the Washington Post, I believe, has still not reported on the five, not a word, I think, on the $5 million from the Burisma executive in Ukraine to Joe Biden and the additional $5 million to Hunter Biden and the paperwork off of Capitol Hill that they have secured, the Oversight Committee, I believe that the Washington Post has not mentioned, has not mentioned. we got to squeeze in the last uh, Jim Trusty, the... Here's Jim Trusty with uh, Snuffleupagus. There's an issue that anyone that reads any newspapers would agree is a parallel track, which is the Delaware document scandal of Joe Biden, where there's a special counsel, Rob Herr, that's investigating it. You know that there were documents that were sensitive, that were marked classified, found in a garage near a Corvette that made their way through Chinatown, through the Penn Biden Center. Bomb, 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 bomb. Uh, but, you know, when you're a Democrat, you've got George Stephanopoulos and Chunk Todd and whoever his phony replacement will be doing the downfield blocking for you and propping you up and expressing outrage that anyone would bring up anything that is anything other than beneficial to your cause and your efforts. It is good to be a Democrat in a corrupt media landscape, the media landscape that is the United States of America. Net 
Damon. Matt Damon. Now, uh, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck are apparently taking legal action against President Trump this morning because President Trump posted a uh, video with uh, video clips and photographs, still photographs of himself and of Americans and Trump rallies and things. And uh, President Trump pulled a an audio portion from the movie called Air, which is about Michael Jordan cutting a deal with Nike many years ago. And Matt Damon plays the role in the movie of the Nike executive who ropes in uh, Michael Jordan for the deal. And at one point in the movie, which I actually watched, Matt Damon gives a an inspirational speech about, you know, life and being an American and being a success. And when you rise to the top, they try to tear you down and you have to build yourself back up again. And President Trump used a clip from this uh, Matt Damon, uh, Ben Affleck movie uh, in his video that he posted. And now money can buy you almost anything. It can't buy you immortality. That you have to earn. I'm going to look you in the eyes and I'm going to tell you the future. It's an American story and that's why Americans are going to love it. People are going to build you up. God, are they going to? Because when you're great and new, we love you. Man, we'll build you into something that doesn't even exist. You're going to change the world. You know what? Once they've built you as high as they possibly can, they're going to tear you back down. It's the most predictable pattern. We build you into something that doesn't exist, and that means you have to try to be that thing. So President Trump posted this video using a clip from this Matt Damon movie, a Matt Damon speech, and now they're furious, and they're taking legal action, and they're demanding that he stop using the clip from their movie, um, you know, the inspirational speech and, and all of that good stuff. It reminds me of a conversation I had with Donald Rumsfeld, then Secretary of Defense at the Pentagon when he was named Time Magazine's Person of the Year, Man of the Year, over 65 or something. And uh, he looked me uh, square in the eye when I told him, and he said, those that the gods will destroy, they must first build up. It's kind of where we are again. I'll see you tomorrow. (laughs) 